All right, here we are, Zerg Berg Phase 3. Uh, here is our current progress. You'll notice that all the drives are actually on and working and in one cluster, which I will show you in a second over there. Look at that beautiful nest of cables. And of course, our six uh, PCIe USB 3 controllers, which all worked in 8.1, which was great. Uh, so here we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and walk around here real quick and show you what we've got over here. I guess the phone doesn't like to uh, zoom. All right, you'll notice that we have the Zergberg. 17.2 terabytes spanned across 38 465 gigabyte drives, you know, 500 gigabyte drives after uh, formatting and all that fun stuff. And of course, thanks to wonderful storage spaces, all these drives are just the one Z drive through special formatting in the controller. Oops. Excuse me a second. There you go. 17.1 terabytes, the Zergberg. It rises. All right, and just for a little bit of Technicolor show, underneath here, oh, well, of course I'm not writing anything to them, so it's, no, there's no lights anymore. Um, but, <laughs> it is working. Um, that is a dancing light show from all the IO traffic that's underneath. Uh, it's actually a bit of a trip. I did have a couple of controllers that went out um, just through the process. Of course, I dropped this whole side here at one point. Um, so I'm kind of happy that they're still working. Um, but so I had to replace three of the USB 3 controllers, but uh, it, it, it's all working. And we're to the point that it doesn't take five minutes for Windows to start up anymore. Uh, word to the wise add them in phases because uh, uh, when I first did this, I connected all of them and it took about eight minutes for Windows to start <laughs> um, as it had to individually connect to each individual drive and try and give it a drive letter and all that fun stuff. Uh, it, it did not work real well. But the other thing I do want to point out real quick is that of course we have uh, the 24 ports here. We have the 10 ports on the board. We have our two uh, USB 3 headers that are going to another four ports that are right there. Yeah, if it wants to zoom. And because we still need our normal connection devices, we're also using the USB 2.0 headers uh, and we're going and connecting those to run of the keyboard and mouse. So we are literally running, um, well, right now we are running 40 USB, uh, USB devices 38 of them are running all over USB 3, uh, which is um, fun. <laughs> all right, so uh, next video, um, I need to resleeve. I need to resleeve and run all these cables. Same thing for everything out of the power supply. Basically, needs to be resleeved and and run so that it looks right and looks pretty. Um, I need to put some of the caps on these guys. This rat's nest of cables down here. Um, <laughs> you see how depressing that is. Gotta find a way to uh, wire all that stuff underneath so it looks pretty. Uh, but other than that, we are stable. I am actually able to restart. Um, and I do get the entire array and everything is working beautifully. Um, and I'm down to a very... The additional time at startup isn't really an appreciable amount. Uh, maybe an additional 30 seconds or so for it to connect to all those devices from a soft restart. Uh, a hard restart, uh, you know, add another 20 or 30 seconds to that. But all things considered, that's still not bad given that um, it's having to individually connect to all of those, reassign mount the controllers and all that stuff, and then put them into the array. Uh, the other thing I do want to point out here is that we are at 17.2, and we're running in parity. Now, what parity will give us as far as Windows services or control or uh, storage spaces is concerned, that 17.2 terabytes um, actually gives us the, re uh, the resiliency, as it calls it, um, 
at this point, it'll actually give us, it says two drives, anything, seven drives or more, it can actually give you two drives of parity, um, which is roughly the equivalent to RAID 5. Um, I really didn't see the need to use double mirrors or triple mirrors or any of the other stuff. Uh, it seemed like a waste of all these uh, wonderful hard drives. Um, so anyway, uh, next video, we, sh we should get progressively looking better and better and better. Alrighty. Bah. I forgot. I also wanted to take a second and go ahead and show you the transfer rate across the drives. Um, and this is just streaming over my network, uh, just over an Ethernet cable. And so pulling from my NAS, and right here we're pulling 30 Rock, which I obviously just ripped from the Blu-rays that I own. <clears throat> Um, and you're, oh God, that is just terrible. All right. So you're seeing I'm averaging somewhere around 45, 50 megabytes a second, which, uh, I don't consider really all that bad. Um, let's go ahead and take a look up here. You should see kind of the various technos technicolor blinking lights as it kind of passes those bits across all the drives. So really... Somewhere I, you know, I, I, looks like I go down to 35 and then up to 60 and then I, I this does not seem to be a really an appreciable, uh, drop. So, yay, look, I'm up in the seventies. Alrighty. Um, beautiful. All right.